Hi, everybody. My name is Adam Brown, and I am the audio lead currently on a um, project called Hit and Bit by Digital Scorpion Interactive. Um, before I was audio lead, um, I was also a composer on the project, um, an audio designer, so I had some sound design as well. Um, and let's see what else. I also do a lot of the technical implementation uh, for the project and, and the heavy lifting as far as that goes. So um, anyway, I my future videos will center more on the technical um, aspects of what I do, but today I just really felt like doing a video about the music. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the brief that I had to compose to on this one. Um, so basically we have two different parallel storylines in this game. Uh, one follows Hit, which is the sister and a sister-brother duo, and she is more of a fighter. Uh, think like action adventure RPG type. Um, and then there's also Bit, who's her brother. He is a mage and a master of magic. So uh, we have these two parallel storylines going on, but two characters with totally different abilities. Um, yet they're kind of on the same journey of adventure and exploration. The game is going to be a Metroidvania with possibly, you know, a few elements of action RPG in there, but we're pretty much sticking to the Metroidvania concept. So, so yeah, adventure and exploration is a big part of it. So, yeah, I, you know, I was charged with, okay, how do I represent those ideas musically? And honestly, I prefer, as a composer, whenever I have to do that, I prefer composing to concepts rather than, like, making a, you know, like a, I, I guess like a standard song, you know? So I don't really like to think about what chord changes are going to sound good together, what, um, you know, what are the typical conventions I could follow here? Am I capable of doing that? Yes. But... Um, at this point in my career, I just like I really like to try to represent concepts in the form of music. So that's what I've done here. Um, so when trying to represent the two kind of like opposite yet parallel storylines, um, I really wanted to experiment some with bitonality. So um, it, it took me kind of several tries to to discover the sound I was hearing in my head. Um, but eventually, uh, I ended up settling on the um, scale of G melodic minor. Um, but that scale didn't exist first. Um, it's more that like I was trying in maybe the upper voices um, of the song to have like a major chord, and then you know um, the lower harmony would be minor sounding. So you know we have these opposite um, sorts of. Uh, like musical elements going on at once. So as you can see here, you know, I've got a D major chord in the right hand and, you know, in the left hand, we're outlining G minor add nine, basically. So we have a sound like this. Um. A little flub there, sorry. But um, anyway... So we've got a D major over G minor add nine, and then we're moving to, um, let's see, what have we got here? F sharp minor seven flat five, um, and you know, kind of both, um, both hands here are outlining that harmony. Um, yeah, cool. So then as we move into um, kind of the B section of the piece, we've got B minor seven over E minor add nine. Clearly, like we've we've kind of got some you know composing patterns and stuff going on here, but um, you know even on or like in this chord here, we've essentially got a D major triad um, above an E minor sound. So major up here, even though it's in the context of a minor seven chord, and then minor down here. As we move on to um, the next part of the theme, we've got. G minor seven happening over E flat. Uh, let's see, minor add four, pretty much in this case. So we get a sound like this. So yeah, those don't quite go together, but it works for um, for this piece. 
so then we've also got uh, moving on from there the the left hand um, or the lower voices um, you know are playing something major we've got a C major add nine right hand is playing um, you know G minor chord yes of course I know that you know together all of this stuff you know makes like a C9 chord um, I understand that but but we can't think of it that way because um, you know that's that's truly not the harmony that's going on here. You know, we've got very strong triads in the upper voices um, that are establishing, you know, kind of their their own section sound versus, you know, as you'll hear in a minute when it's orchestrated, um, you know, all these lower sounds go to a different set of instruments. And um, yeah, so like just for the sake of like voice movement as well, we don't want to really think of it as like a C9 chord. Um, it's just just different, just not thinking of it that way. Okay, so then we get down here to um, kind of our, our turnaround chord. And of course, you know, I didn't want to do like a 5-1 or something like that. So with some, you know, experimentation, found something a bit more interesting. Um, honestly, I, I let's see, what was I thinking of? I, th I think I was thinking of one of the chords in Layla, um, you know, in that uh, outro whenever, you know, I was like, hey, why don't we try this? as the turnaround before we go back into the D major over G minor again. So anyway, I've got a B flat major sharp 11. Um, that chord itself, even though I'm not really exploiting it to its fullest degree, right? Like normally we would maybe do um, like a, a B flat seven chord and then maybe a C major triad on top of that in order to accomplish the sound. But in this case, I'm just not really exploiting it that way. So um, I'm truly voicing it more like a B flat seven sharp 11 chord here, uh, which is definitely an interesting turnaround chord if, if you ask me. Um, so some other things to note about this piece is that um, it was kind of like some of the mixed decisions here. So I know that um, like normally you'd want to focus on the melody and things would kind of support that. But again, these are parallel journeys. Um, nothing is necessarily more important than the other. So, um, so like I kind of represented that in the mix by not giving you necessarily a clear focus as to like, what is the main layer that I should be listening to? So you'll hear that, you know, when, when I came up with a melody here, um, that it doesn't necessarily always sit on top of everything else. And that's by design in this case, um, Personally, I feel like there's a lot of freedom when you're composing to a concept uh, because you don't necessarily uh, have to um, I don't do things the con the conventional way, I guess you know, and and you don't have to um, I don't know, it just frees you up to make different decisions, right, and be able to justify those. So anyway, we're in F mod now, which is our middleware of choice for this particular game. Um, yeah, and you just kind of want to show how these different voices are represented here first. So as I was orchestrating this, um, what ended up happening was, um, you know, I tried out a few different configurations of instruments, of course. Um, those upper voices, the, you know, the, the triads that we saw on the right hand of, of kind of that piano sheet uh, before, those ended up going to, you know, kind of some, some choir um, and pads. I'll just listen to what that sounds like real quick. You can kind of hear the sound there. And actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and boost this up by a bit here, just for the sake of this video. Um, cool. And then um, those lower voices went to um, some different spiccato strings here. So here we go. Cool. So, um, you know, you also like articulation wise, having that, um, all those kind of two separate journeys represented is, is also present, right? Like we've got the pads are holding and the, the left hand, the lower voices, those are playing short spiccato. They're moving a lot. So we've also got those opposing forces happening here. Um, Okay, so here's what that sounds like together. I'll zoom out so we can kind of see what's going on. Um, whoops, we'll mute, mute, and mute, and talk about those other layers here in just a second. Here we go. Thank you. 
used a different voicing for this. <laughs> Cool, and it ends up repeating back to um, to the top there. So that's you know the entire length of the piece. Um, okay, so then you know kind of the the next thing I had to take care of right was um, coming up with some type of adventure melody that unites the two kind of opposing forces and characters here. So um, I started in on oh so it, you know when I think adventure I kind of think of like French horns, mid breast stuff like that. You know, um, kind of bold hero textures. Um, so I had to write a melody, um, which I don't have notated for you, but I had to write a melody that kind of um, sits between those two layers. So it's mid register versus like the spiccato stuff is lower than this and the pads are higher than this. So, you know, it literally kind of unites the two or at least helps them to meet in the middle. Um, and yeah, the melody is designed to be as consonant as possible with both. Um, and so that caused me to kind of like take some freedom as far as like which scale I was using, which notes I was highlighting, um, stuff like that. So, uh, anyway, uh, here's what it sounds like with that, um, layer added in. Cool. So you get the idea there. I think we've got some pops and clicks here, and that's just because um, currently we're not working on a sprint right now um, for this. But uh, you know, I noticed that as bugs, and uh, so I will take care of those as soon as uh, we're meant to project management wise. Cool. So then um, you know, I ended up like working with um, like trying to find a counter melody as well that would kind of really push that feeling of magic. So, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, so how does John Williams maybe like represent magic? You know, I'm thinking woodwinds, chillest, things like that. So, you know, I end up with a uh, counter melody to kind of um, really drive that, that sort of sense home. Um, so here's what it sounds like with that added in. Sparkly bits, right? Cool. All right. So then the next step was, um, okay, well, I'll have this done. I think I'm okay with it, but let's go ahead and add on some more layers just to, you know, kind of turn this into something that, uh, well, just kind of push this as far as it can go um, in this, you know, adventure direction. So I think I was watching um, some, um, some gameplay at the time of uh, like one of the Marvel games and, you know, just kind of had like some some kind of like hero music really stuck in my head. And, uh, yeah, so I decided to go ahead and add some, like, uh, some, some basses and, um, I think we just have timpani on this. We might have some bass drum, but I guess I'd have to open up the Reaper session to, um, to have a look at that. So anyway, I wasn't sure this layer was going to be, um, kept. Um, but in the end, the, um, chief creative officer ended up saying, you know what? Yes. Like I want to keep that in. That's the vibe we're after. So, um, it ended up staying in. Um, okay. So here's what it sounds like all together now. I can't tell you how uncomfortable it makes me that, that that melody is not sitting on top of everything else, but that's the point. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, okay. So basically, those, those are all the layers that we have involved here now. So let's kind of talk about the um, the implementation design here. It's not, it's not complicated, obviously. Um, for this, you know, it's how long is the player really going to stay on the menu, right? So I, you know, I have to spend an appropriate amount of time designing this to, you know, to have some behaviors, but without like over designing it, um, at least initially, right? So, um, so basically, the first several times we want players to open up the game, uh, we want them to encounter this melody as intended, or, or this song as intended, so that it kind of um, gives you this um, sense of what to expect, how to feel, and hopefully draw you into the game. You know, so you can know like right away that hey, this is this is what I'm. I'm I'm supposed to, or this is what the journey is going to feel like, right? So we're trying to represent that and get players hooked. So, um, you know, at the very beginning, all the layers are playing together. After that, we go into an actual loop of the theme. Um, you know, I still got the pads, the low mid strings, the bass percussion layers, um, just continually looping. But then the melody and counter melody are chopped up in my DAW, um, you know, by phrase. And each of these here, where you see the fades, has a 65% chance of playing. So both of them may play, none of them may play, different combinations of them may play. Uh, but this will you know, make the, the mini music less repetitive once we get to here. And kind of turn it into like a much longer piece with references more to the melody and to the counter melody, um, you know, kind of as we go. Sorry if I'm clipping here, because I'm getting a little excited. <laughs> but anyway, um, this stuff is exciting to me. Uh, cool. So... That's what we have right now. Now, I, I want to say that like in a future update, like once this is launched, once players have been exposed to this theme a whole lot, what I foresee us doing in, in kind of like a patch update, whatever, is removing this first section uh, because in theory, we'll already have players kind of hooked or our Steam reviews are going to get players in the door or something like that. So we would instead cut straight to the um, to the version of the song that's, that's less repetitive and... Um, you know, just kind of has like a longer lifespan, you know? Um, so I would literally just at that point end up deleting this, dragging all this back, and that's what the players would um, face from then on. Uh, but I don't know. Let's go, from, let's go from maybe this point here and just kind of hear how these um, you know, different melodies might interact with each other. Um, again, they all have a 65% chance of playing each. Uh, let's see what happens. Melody playing. No counter melody. Nice. Okay. And so on. So yeah, you can see you know how that works. Uh, currently, this event also has an eight-second fade because I don't think we have the finalized logic just yet uh, as far as like how the scenes are going to trans, um, like in Unity, are going to um, hand off from the main menu to the first level you spawn into or into whatever level you spawn into. And so until that logic is like really worked out. Um, you know, pretty much all I did was um, stick in, yeah, okay, a seven second fade on this just just so that like we have something that represents what it's eventually going to sound like. And um, yeah, that's going to work for now. Um, I should also mention that this event gets destroyed when you leave the, uh, the like main menu scene. Um, and so I don't currently this, this fade plus the the destroy is is working right now, but it's just not foolproof, and so you know we'll be updating that logic later from an implementation standpoint. But anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed this this little video. I know it's a bit long, but um, hopefully we we learned something, and um, you know I had fun showing off my work. So if you guys have any feedback for me or kind of some some cool stuff that I might be able to you know inject into this at 
you know, a later time when we're on a future sprint dealing with this. And I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to, you know, to, to learn something. I'm always wanting to learn something new here. So thanks um, for stopping by and we'll see you next time. Bye.